Uh, my name is Bertha Vasquez. I work at George Washington Carver Middle School in Miami, Florida. Uh, I've been there 18 years. I teach mainly sixth grade comprehensive science. I teach honors earth-based science and honors biology. I got my undergraduate degree at the University of Miami in biology. I got my master's in science education and I also got my National Board Certification in Science in the year 1997. So I'm recertifying for that right now. Two things. One is that wow moment in the classroom when kids go, oh, and they get it. I, also, I always say that kids are not vessels to be filled, they're candles to be lit. And you can see when that light goes on. That's the short-term success, that's the short-term satisfaction. The long-term satisfaction is when I have a child who's now 27, 28 years old and he finds me on Facebook and he tells me that he lives in Nepal and he's a wildlife ecologist. Or someone who's not in the sciences but who tells me she remembers so many of the things that I taught her in class and how helpful that was in high school and in college. So you have that long-term long satisfaction and the short-term satisfaction of your results. That's easy. When the doors close and it's just me and the kids learning together and it's there's always a lot of humor. There's a very friendly collegial feeling in the classroom and the kids are just learning and having a good time hands-on experiments and that's the best part of teaching. When you have to walk out and deal with the paperwork and the administration and all the things that surround teaching these days, it's not as much fun. Having to find creative ways to meet the state standards, having to keep the classroom environment interesting with that real life connection while having to m teach to the test. Because if you really want to cover the test quickly, you just throw up some multiple choice questions and the kids answer them, but that's no fun for the kids and that's no fun for me. So finding ways to still use labs, still use hands-on, still use open-ended questions, and also address the state requirements in terms of testing. So my dad was a lifetime educator. He's a retired principal. And before I became a teacher, I didn't know I was going to be a teacher. He said he knew I was going to be a teacher. He said the most important thing is to teach kids how to be critical thinkers. And I've always remembered that. It's not about a bunch of facts they're going to forget. It's teach them to think for themselves and look at evidence and understand it and analyze it. Another big influence on me was Rachel Carlson. She wrote Silent Spring. She was so important in the environmental movement of realizing what our chemicals and what our behaviors were doing to the environment. And there's personal success in South Florida because she sounded the alarm for the decrease in numbers of the bald eagle and lesser known osprey. And we are seeing both species make a huge comeback in South Florida and we know it's because of her efforts and her calling the attention to DDT and that, the dangerous use of those chemicals back in the 1960s. So I have a first edition of her book in my classroom and I show it to the kids every year. It, I, that really varies from state to state. Mm -hmm. I could tell you what it is in Florida. You can, if you have a science background, they give you a couple years to get your science education courses in. I didn't take any education in college. I took science, strictly science, and I'm very grateful for that now because I think a teacher is born, but you, the content you need to learn. Um, it's always good, however, to have advanced degrees, um, so a master's is great, and I highly recommend to get certified, nationally board certified in your subject area. That, it's a process that really makes you reflect on your teaching and, and what your students need to succeed. That there's a lot of little successes. There's a lot of small successes every day and long-term successes that you see years and years later. But uh, sometimes you wake up and you're a little tired and you know you're going to face some issues, but uh, the rewards may not be monetary, but I think they're much bigger, they're much greater than monetary rewards.